Hello and welcome to this London Embroidery School Stitch Along. I'm going to be your host for today, Natasha. So welcome and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be working on today's uh, design from our Easter Egg Bauble PDF Stitch Along, uh, which is a design that we released on our website a little while ago uh, in preparation for Lent and Easter. And it's a class, well, it's not a class actually, it's just a PDF, but it's uh, a set of instructions that just allows you to make a 3D bauble, which is egg shaped. Um, it's off the back of our Christmas bauble classes. Uh, that we released and they seem to go down really well with you guys. You seemed to really enjoy them. Um, so we decided to release another one because, you know, why wait till next Christmas, really? Um, I should have that to hand, shouldn't I really? Hold on one second. There we go. Right, so this is what we're working towards today. It is this part of our design that we are doing. Yeah, so we really loved how well you guys seem to take to the PDF design that we released for Christmas, which was a set of trees. And so, yeah, we have an Easter version, which is really just a celebration of spring. If you don't sort of celebrate Easter in the same sort of way, that's not really a problem. It's uh, not really about the kind of religious celebration side of things. It's more just a celebration of the season. How is your day going today, guys? Mine has been a little bit of two parts. I've been a bit all over the place today. So we will see how this stitch along goes. It is, of course, live. And so, well, anything can happen really, can't it? But it is always nice to be sitting down and doing a little bit of stitching and just taking a few minutes out to be in the moment. I think that's really what we want to encourage you to do with your embroidery projects, whatever project you've got on the go. I think it's so useful to just use this time to have a little bit of downtime, but whilst doing something helps to put you in a bit more of a meditative state particularly if you find calming down or chilling out a bit more tricky something nice and calming to do that feels like it's kind of achieving but without being too strenuous is pretty pretty golden I think for this sort of Activity. So, uh, of course, if you have any questions about embroidery or sewing or anything that you think I might be able to help you with, please do feel free to leave your messages in the comments. I will try and check in on them periodically when I get to good points in the stitching to do so. Now, I'm trying to work this first flower in a daisy stitch, which is kind of like a single chain stitch. You just do one at a time and finish each one like you would a chain stitch with a little holding stitch on the end. But that's quite a good way to build flower petals quite quickly as you will have seen here. I also try and do something different from what you will have seen in our photos of our product sample piece so that you can see how you might be able to vary it and make it your own and, you know, interpret the artworks as you wish. You don't just have to do what you see, particularly with these PDF ones. They're really good for taking it your own way. Perhaps if I show you in the PDF itself, which I just have to the side here, I'm just gonna put my stitching down for a second. So we have the PDF itself here. 
Um, obviously, you get kind of a, a contents of what's in here, as well as the equipment and materials. And the pattern itself, um, so this is the one to draw out, and then you get a separate one which tells you what to do which day, if you're using it as a daily stitching countdown. Um, how to transfer the design, uh, a variety of different stitches and how to do them. So lines and then a bit more fancy stitches. And then we have a page of like inspiration. So you can interpret each of the designs as you wish, but we've got a lot of photos um, to inspire you on how you might like to interpret them. So it's particularly good if you're new to embroidery then you get lots of ideas about how you might turn those lines into embroidery. But equally, if you're a bit more of an experienced stitcher, then you can really just freestyle it and make it your own. So I'm moving on to the other little flower that's kind of got long spiky petals. This one being that bit smaller, I'm just doing as a straight stitch, which very much looks as the name suggests. Just working my way around, trying to keep that tension nice and even. A little bit like so. So this first egg, you may have seen me work on in the first stitch along for this product that we did when we first released it. Uh, in fact, on day one of Lent, um, which is in a satin stitch. And so that just gives us a bit of a taste of some of the stitches that you can do and are taught in the kit if you want to give them a try. Because this is a PDF only product, you can use it to use up some of the materials you will likely have stashed. Now, I think you guys are quite a lot like me in that you have a very generous and healthy craft stash. And from that, you keep lots of lovely things that you think, oh, I'm gonna use that at some point. And then it can get a bit tricky to actually getting round to using it. Well, this is the sort of project that is perfect to use up those really nice little bits of materials and thread and fabric that you have stashed. So because it is a PDF only product, you source your own materials for it and you can, you know, pick your own colorway and all that sort of thing. It's really useful on that front to get you to use up the lovely things that I know that you have. So I'm gonna move on to a different stitch now, which is going to be a stem stitch to outline these leaves. When I did this artwork before for our finished sample, you will have seen that a lot of this particular design was done in kind of satin stitch. So it's quite sort of dense. Today I'm going to try and work on it a little bit more um, openly so that you can see a different way that that same artwork can be interpreted. Quite a few people, it would seem, have been using this as a daily stitching challenge. Because each design is, you know, quite little, it's quite a good one for encouraging you to do a little bit of stitching regularly and building on those skills. Embroidery, like almost every skill really, is about consistency and repetition. You know, the more you do, the better you get. So if you are trying to get better at embroidery and it's something that you feel you want to really progress in, then 
you know, setting yourself a little bit of a challenge, like a daily stitching challenge, can really help to speed up the process as you chip away at the skills each day. And as we've got sort of 40 or so designs within this particular project, you have many opportunities to try things out, but also as you go along to really watch your skills progress, if you look at your early ones and then as you try and circle back to the same techniques later on in the design, as you inevitably will, then you can, yeah, really see how your stitching is coming along. If you are stitching along with me at home, it would be lovely to see how you're getting on with your stitching. I am terribly nosy on that front. I do love to see how you guys are getting along. So um, yeah, if you feel like sharing any photos, please do tag us in your London Embroidery School make photos. I love to see them. And it is usually me picking them up. Um, so yeah, satisfy my curiosity, please. I also have a small announcement to make in that we have a new product coming next week that will be launching for VIPs on Thursday and to the rest of the public on Friday. Now, if you're interested in becoming one of our VIPs, you can do this in one of two ways. You can sign up to our mailing list, which is at the bottom of our homepage on the website. Um, that will sign you up to our newsletter. We email you with information about things that we've got going on, things we've got coming. Um, you get to give a lot more of your own opinions about how the London Embroidery School is you know, working, what we offer. Um, if you want to let us know, then that really is the place to do that and to hear from us. Equally, we also have the London Embroidery School Club, which is on Facebook. And that gives you the opportunity to kind of interact a little bit more as well as with us, but also with other members of the community. So sometimes I think you guys kind of just need to talk to each other. We are here always to help you with your stitching inquiries. If you get stuck with anything, then of course you can get in touch with us. But sometimes it's also nice to kind of bounce your ideas off people in a similar situation to yourself and a similar position and at a similar point in their learning. And so we have the London Embroidery School Club. So if you just search for that in Facebook clubs, you should find us. And if you put in a request, then uh, we will admit you and you can get chatting. And yeah, you can share photos on that and uh, just generally chat to the rest of the community. We bounce a lot of early ideas off of you guys over there as well. So it's really useful for being the first in the know. So as I say, new product coming next week. I am going to show you what that looks like in a little bit later on in this session. I think it's a really exciting one. It's going to be a three-part class. It's quite a sort of a bigger design, um, a creative project. And you'll need a little bit of sewing experience um, for that one to kind of really come into its own. But I think you guys are going to love it. I think it's really pretty. Um, I absolutely adore the color palette. So I think you will too. I hope you will at least. So just working my way still around these leaves. I am working in a single strand of stranded cotton for the finest finish that I can achieve with this. These flowers are probably the smallest element within the Easter egg bauble design. So 
going for a single strand is probably the way to achieve the most detail in it if that's what you're looking for. We've also had a fair bit of feedback on this PDF that um, quite a few of you have printed it out and gifted it, which is lovely um, that you yeah, feel that it has enough product and uh, well, enough interest in it to be a nice gift in of itself, which is just lovely. Um, so if you've left your Mother's Day gift, a little bit late, then perhaps this might be a nice idea of something that you could gift if that's uh, something you think your mum would be interested in. Just going to go for a new thread. Okie doke. Just threading out my needle there using the bloom into the eye method, which is my personal preferred way to thread up a needle. It involves squeezing the thread between your first finger and your thumb, and then allowing it to sort of literally bloom into the eye of the needle. So squeezing it over with your fingers so that you compress it and then placing the eye of the needle where you've seen the thread just disappear and then when you roll back the fingers from one another taking off a little bit of that pressure it just allows the thread to open up hopefully into the eye of the needle and then you can just pinch it from the other side and pull it through. It is just one of four methods of threading up the needle that we include in are four ways to thread up a needle pro tip. We have a whole pro tips section on our YouTube channel, which, as the name suggests, um, shares pro tips from us in the studio, for, so from professional embroiderers and the things that we do to make either things a bit quicker or a little bit easier um, or just more enjoyable. Um, so do have a look at those. If you're looking for ways to level up your embroidery or if you find that you have a particular sticking point, something that makes doing embroidery less enjoyable for you, do have a look over there to see if we have a little something that might help you to, yeah, do it a little bit easier or just take the strain out of it. So I can see I have missed a little leaf up here. I have to go back for that one. But otherwise, I do have to say that uh, stem stitch is my preferred method for stitching lines. I love the little ropey effect that you get with the twist that is encouraged by a stem stitch and the smoothness of the line. So each stitch leans on the previous one and leans forwards on the next one. And so until you've actually completed your line, no stitch is fully done. So you start off with a little extra half and you end with a little extra half, which gives it that twisted effect. So what I mean is that we open up the stitch here and we put in a small half stitch that pulls this first part of the stitch downwards. And then the next stitch goes in 
and completes that first stitch, just helping to balance it all out. Got a little knot on the underside there. Just ease that out. Perhaps there was a little bit too much twist on the thread. Okay, so that brings us round. Oh, we've got one more over here. You can work a stem stitch in either direction but you want to keep the direction of the twist the same so you always want the twist to be passing from the bottom left to the top right which is more flattering to the way that the thread is twisted when it's created and will give you a smarter finish to your embroidery in general. Okay, I'm just going to weave my thread into the back. Right, I think it's time for a new colour. Shall we go for, I feel like we want to use, oh, I've still got some thread. Uh, so I feel like we should use the yellow for the centers. So maybe if we go for this, I think that's too similar. Mm, yeah, maybe let's go for the dark like magenta tone that we have here for these bigger flowers. Now, what should we do stitch-wise for them? Mm. I think we will go for a satin stitch. It's a classic. And you'll be able to see the difference then between the satin stitch in one strand over here and in uh, several strands that we used in the egg. Just gonna have a quick flick through for any questions. No, I think we're okay. So as we're going for a fill stitch, I am going to stab stitch to begin. which is just to anchor the thread. And then we can come up and drop down on the outside edge. We start in the center so that we can set up our stitching angle and then try to maintain it. So working over to one side first of all, and then back to the center and working out again. back to the center, set up the angle, and then try to maintain it.
It is quite sunny here today, but intermittently, so I hope that's not affecting the light for you guys too much. It's just far too nice a day to just be working by artificial light when there's the option for natural light. Just easing that thread between my two hands, passing the needle between. Stitching with both hands is a great way to increase the speed of your embroidery if that's something that you're aiming towards. Again, we have a pro tip on that on our YouTube channel if you wanna see how you might start to introduce yourself to that concept. does take a bit of getting used to. We don't often use both hands for such specific work as embroidery, but I think that's very good for us in general to use those parts of our brain for both sides of our bodies. And it comes as a bit of a challenge, which I think is a good thing. If you haven't already started a project like this, don't think that it's too late to get started with the Easter bauble. It's absolutely not. As you can see, you can build up each one of the designs really quite quickly. And we had a few different ideas at the end of last year about how you might have a resolution that was embroidery related. One of them being doing daily stitching, which obviously this project would be great for if you wanted to do that, but that doesn't suit everybody's schedule. You know, some people simply don't have kind of a daily routine um, for daily stitching to slot into. And if that sounds a bit more like you, then perhaps you could think about trying to fit in, you know, a weekly stitching slot. Have you got an hour that you could sort of pledge to yourself to be hand embroidery time and work on a little project like this. Or could you say to yourself, oh, I'm going to learn a new stitch each month this year. If even going for a weekly approach is a little too on the heavy side, you know, we're all busy people. And it's important when we're setting goals, I think, to set goals that are achievable, as that is partly what encourages us to carry on. So actually, I'm just gonna finish off this thread before I start the next flower. Again, with stab stitches, cutting nice and close, and taking a fresh thread. So to get started with the embroidery for this, you would obviously need your choice of embroidery threads and a base fabric on which to work. A medium weight woven fabric without any stretch, a little bit like so, is great. If you're looking to not start anything new with this and you don't have a considerable craft stash, are there any household textiles that you might like to recycle or put to better use? I often think we are gifted things like, I don't know, tea towels, for example, that, you know, might actually not be great for 
tea towel dishcloth purposes but they are you know made of some really nice cottons and so perhaps you could repurpose one of those for a project a bit like this quite a few of the other resolutions we came up with are to do also with you know reducing the waste from our leisure time things like embroidery trying to make it a little bit more eco-friendly and so yeah it doesn't always have to involve buying new materials to get started with a, a project like this we can if we're clever have a little look around at what we might already have you know have you got some bed linen that either is no longer to your taste or um, you know perhaps it has seen better days but you know, parts of the fabric are perhaps still good I know that that certainly happens to me in the last week or so. Um, I have a dog who is still quite young and he did have zoomies and split my duvet cover. To be fair, it's had a little bit of a tough life, but however, the pillowcases from that duvet set are still good. Um, but perhaps I you know, should retire them as well and recycle the fabric from them for purposes like this. Just ways to think about how you might like to change things up a little bit. If that's something you're trying to be conscious of. So within each petal I'm trying to keep stitches parallel if I meet one of the leaves we can go down into the stitching of the leaf as well just to give that sense of the flower sitting on top of the leaves gives us a little sense of depth adds a little bit of interest Okay, almost at the end of this one. I think I might have just booked the phone there with my nose. Sorry about that. So still into the center there, up to the edge and filling out the sides. I have an embroidery size 10 needle that I'm working with here. This is my, probably my favorite weight and type of needle. I think it's just a really good all rounder. It allows you to do some of this finer work, but you know, has an eye that's big enough to take a decent number of strands if you wanted to scale things up a little bit. Really useful needle. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the satin stitch. I think we'll just pop a couple of little French knots into the center and that will be our flower garland done. So just moving on to my yellow, I chose a color palette for this sample right at the beginning of the first stitch along that we did the egg from. So I'm sticking with that, so I think that's quite fun and we went for you know such a pastely one with this design over here on that very soft lilac base that um, I wanted to go for something a little bit more punchy. Now I did promise that I would show you our new design and so this is what's coming next week. It's going to be our knotted landscape piece as you can see it's got loads of texture in it 
Uh, we've got a real range of materials in this one. We've got some stranded cotton. We've got some ribbon. Um, we've got yarn, tapestry yarn over here. And we've got pearl cotton up the top here, which is a little bit different to the stranded cotton. And working just purely in different knotted stitches for this design. So I think it's a really fun class. I've really enjoyed putting this one together and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it too. Um, it's, I would say it's been a labour of love, but it's actually, it was so much fun to do that I didn't find it work at all, basically. And so hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did. It works on the premise that you will likely have done a French knot before, a little bit like we're going to do now. Um, but perhaps you don't really know many of the other knotted stitches. And there are, in fact, quite a few different knotted stitches that you can do. So they fall into some different categories of like detached knots, which are things like French knots. But they do have two very similar stitches, which are called Chinese knots and colonial knots, which all make a ball type knot. But they're formed in different ways, and so each have their pros and cons. So you might enjoy, if you like doing French knots, which are just so sweet. I mean, look at the tiny little balls that they make, so cute, that uh, you might find some of those other stitches for your own stitch library interesting additions. As well as French knots, you may well have also already heard of bullion knots, which are kind of the bigger, longer versions of a French knot. But often people feed back to us that they find them quite tricky. And so hopefully with the, the help of this class, that would make that a little bit easier. I think we've debunked some of the tricky bits of doing bullion knots within that class you might like to check out. It's going to be a three class course, if you like. So it's taught in three parts, online classes, and they get sent to your email address when you make your purchase, and then we send the kits to you. So this design does have a kit that goes with it. Uh, you will need specific materials and colors to complete it and it looked just like mine unlike this design which gives you a bit more free reign about how you want to interpret it how you want to make it your own so it really depends how you like to learn i believe we've got quite a lot of lovely options for you to choose things that suit your learning style and so that you can work in the way that is best for you So almost at the end of this design, and you can see it's quite an in-depth um, day's design, this particular one. But even so, and with me nattering away, it's only taken sort of 40 minutes. Some of the other designs, uh, like the little stick nest that goes underneath this uh egg where is it here you know the you can see the nest of that one would take you hardly it wouldn't even take you five minutes of your day so there is a bit of a variety um in the complexity of the designs for each day or each uh, design that you want to approach and of course you make it as easy or as difficult as you want based on what you think you want to deal with that particular day so I'm just going to do some little stab stitches to finish here. And that brings me to the end of the design. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this stitch along. If you want to see more from us, you can, of course, find more things on our profile or on our YouTube channel. There's loads of videos on there, lots of really great resources. Otherwise, thank you for joining me. Um, I will see you in the next one. Have fun, stitch well, and keep making beautiful things. Bye for now.